Hi everybody, Keith here. Uh, Mark Hicks is behind the camera. Actually, he's somewhere else in uh, in in, in mid America, and uh, together we are going to uh, teach you today how to uh, paint uh, birch trees and uh, and some rocks. Okay, I know it sounds uh, simple subjects, but a lot of times you need something maybe in the foreground or uh, something you know, bold that, you know, that'll make the scenery set out a little bit. So maybe bringing something a little forward would be a, a good way of, uh, you know, establishing your, your, your painting, you know, nice scene in the back, little foreground work, and off we go. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start with the birch trees here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wet the surface of the trees so and before Keith gets too far in there is a link in the description that you can go and download and print this exact photo out this picture this drawing out uh, if you want to follow along and do it as well because we're not afraid sharing is caring yeah there you go <laughs> so yeah so what I did, I'm gonna, I'm just wetting both of these. I'm gonna do these two main ones right here. So I want it wet enough that it is, that I can make the paint that I play apply to it move. Okay, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So all right, I got these two wet. I'm gonna make sure they're still juicy. You. All right. Now I am going to start with, and here's the trick to this. I like to to my birch trees to have a little color in them, and they do. If you look at birch trees, they got a lot of color in them. They're not just white with black things uh, sticking on them. Uh, so let me grab a slightly smaller brush, and also make sure. Oh yeah, look at that. It's not a clean brush, so. Ew, you didn't buy that brush cleaning kit off Amazon yet? Yeah, for $14.95? Yep. I think it's called soap, water. I'm gonna try another brush just cause I'm afraid. All right, or don't wanna spend 20 minutes trying to clean this one. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of ultramarine blue. So I'm gonna pull it out on the tray, add water to it, okay? Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of drag this straight down kind of the middle. Now, if you notice, I have a fairly small brush. I think it's a six. It is a six. But as you can see, because it's wet, what I've done as I'm coming down is it's going to keep spreading and spreading a little bit so you don't want to put a ton of you don't want to use a big brush with a lot of paint because it'll just poof, you'll have a blue tree you know what you want is you're trying to give it a, a little bit of color a little bit of shadowing okay all right because birch trees are mostly white with black spots yes. right yes and and the trouble is that's boring as hell you know, and it doesn't have any depth or life to it. What I'm giving this is like reflected light, reflected shadows, that kind of thing, okay? They also have some creamy colors, browns in them. There's a lot of different species too, but here, let me continue. I'm now gonna take a little bit of burnt sienna, okay? You can see it on the tray there. And while it's still wet, I'm just going to run a little more color right down the center. And as you can see, I'm not overdoing this, okay? And you'll notice my brush isn't that big. But you see how it's starting to, it, it's getting a, it's getting some values to the tree. So I'm just going to go right down this one too. And you can stop and it'll make like a little blotchy where it expands okay so as you can see 
they're going to meld a little bit, but for the most part, what they're doing is just kind of creating layer on top of a layer, a little bit of color on top of another color. So the last color I'm going to use at this point is uh, violet, which I'm going to create my own real quick using the ultramarine blue and the magenta. You can see it's a lot, a lot more blue than uh, red. I want more of a, a redder one, a redder color. That looks pretty good right there, I think. So the big question is, do I have enough? Ooh. That was a lot of color. So do I have enough water left? Or has it dried too much? Because you want it to move. If it ain't moving, if it's just a streak, then you're not going to get the shadowing and the light and the color to kind of bleed down or bleed around the tree. Okay? All right. So let's check this one. Looks like I'm okay. And we don't want to fill the entire tree. This is kind of like a shadowy, you know, back of this tree. With other bits and colors in it. Yay. So it's kind of dry down here. So I'm kind of just doing the best I can to kind of fill it in. Around the bottom of the tree, it doesn't really matter because you, that ends up being fairly dark anyway. So I'm just going to kind of soften that up a little bit. All right. So you can kind of see we've got two or three colors in there now. And I got to let that dry up. So it shouldn't take too long either in this uh, wintry, dry atmosphere that I'm in right at the moment. So in the meantime, while these are drying, I think I'll put a wash on, on, the rock, uh, on a rock or two. Um, or better yet, let's, let's not mix our metaphors. I think I'll come over here real quick and I'll just wet these two down real quick. And I'll do it again on smaller trees because I'm going to flip this over. Ah. Um, cause a lot of times, uh, you know, that might be the size of your foreground tree, you know? But you can do it smaller, too, is what I'm trying to say. You just got to remember you're going to work a lot, uh, a lot smaller, maybe smaller brushes. You just don't want to accidentally, like I said, create a full blue tree when you're done. So here I am. I'm going to run a quick streak up here and as you can see like I said I, I I don't mind if it it you don't want it to be a nice straight line or something we're kind of creating a uh, color and texture on the on the branch itself on the um, what are these called trunks trunks thank you now does it matter honestly which order you do the colors it does okay this is uh, Keith McGuire's special patented uh, way of doing this, okay? It does matter. Uh, we have tried it with different, you know, different arrangements. And this is the best arrangement that I've uh, come up with. All right. So, again, I'm just going to running a quick streak of the brown right up there. And like I said... In, you know, more humid weather, this would, I wouldn't be killing myself to get this done as quickly as I can. But in this dry, um, I'm doing this in a dry winter month and there ain't a whole lot of moisture left in my house. So, all right. They have these machines that put water into the air. It's crazy called a shower right well, no that works too yeah 
I like to boil up some apples every once in a while just to make it smell pretty too. Apples and cinnamon. Oh my god, it's another whole show! Hmm. Alright, so as you can see, you're like, oh, Keith, that's all full of color now, you know? And it's, no, it isn't. It's, it's, right now it's on a white surface. I will put a little background in so you can see how these trees will pop out uh, of a background, okay? Um, and you'll see that, yeah, there's still white trees. All right, at this point, I'm going to do a quick, yeah, I think it's close enough. We're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to put the, uh, there's a word for it, but I don't know what it is. I'm going to put the, um, the little black air holes. We found this out in my class. I was amazed. Um. I always thought the the little the you know the little black things here, which I'm about to put in right now, the little black spots. I always thought that's where uh, you know a branch fell off, and it becomes a black spot. But such is not the case. They are literally their their bark, the paper bark that they have, is so waterproof that. Uh, they literally have to have air holes. And that's how the tree kind of breathes. The trunk breathes through these little, and it starts with a C, I think. And I can't think of the name of it. So, I don't know if you saw how I did that. I, I just kind of drag a little bit of black on there. I'll add a few little lines. And you want to make sure when you're putting these on, <laughs> That they don't go do 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 do, you know. So we want a little, uh, you know, the space in between to vary, and where they land. So I'll do a couple close ones, and then I'll, you know, usually do a single here and there. We're just trying to, like I said, make sure there is not a pattern. Ooh, a fat one. Put a fat one right here. And as soon as I put that black in, you notice how the trees suddenly got a lot lighter again? It's that contrast. Now, what I like to do is I'll take a a little bit of the uh, uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of the indigo. And I'm sorry, that was the two colors I had been using if I hadn't mentioned it. Um, so I do them a little mix. And then I like to push maybe a little more brown. And I'll go in. And this is where you want a nice... Nice tip doesn't hurt on your brush. And I like these uh, King's Art Max, what are they? Max Round 90-20-02s. Yeah, no, it is a two, I guess, what I'm working with. All right. So you want to also vary up the color on these guys, too, so they're not all just black. You might want to get a little brown in there, too. And if you go looking for birch tree pictures, there's only like, you know, 800 varieties of birch trees too. So if you're doing a scenery, you might want to check which, uh, which birch trees you're working with. Um, in what area you're working in. So at the bottom of the trees, uh, they do get dark and kind of gnarly. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna do it with a little bigger brush or we'll be here all week.
I got a little brown in here. And now I'm going to add a little indigo. And then probably a little bit of water. Hey, what are you working on? Um, just watching. I was looking to see what the names of those things are. air holes are, but it, everything in the way I was searching just kept coming up as fungus, and I know that's not correct. <laughs> so yes. I gave up. It is air fungus. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just uh, trying to get my indigo to work. There we go. So I'm just uh, want to pull some of this darkness around the base of the trees. They tend to do that. All right. So and I take a little water. I like to soften things up a little bit. Let the paint blend. You don't always have to mix the paint to be exactly a color. You can mix a couple colors in on the palette and you can kind of mix them in your brush or you can kind of mix them on the paper. So anyway, I kind of, I'm going with that. So I'm going to just nail this one real quick. You can see when I do this, <laughs> you can see it's it's pretty juicy, pretty wet. Is that a term? It is here. Yeah. <laughs> Learn to paint with Keith. You could always use the M word that triggers people. The M word? Mm hmm What's that? Moist. Ah. Got to keep the paper moist. Moist paper. Moist. That's some moist paper. And our viewer count just dropped it by half. <laughs> All right. So a lot of times I'll go in, have a little fun, add a little water, and I'll let the paint kind of move you know, the water, move the paint around a little bit, and hopefully you get some interesting little, you know, uh, creative little bits of, of uh, watercolor. I believe very strongly in letting the paint do some of the work for you, where you're not like, you don't have to do everything in the painting. Let the, let the paint do some of it. Let the water do some of it. That's the cool thing about watercolors is you have this, uh, you know, every other medium, you put the paint down, that's where it is. Not with watercolors. All right, here we go. So I did a big old brown one right there. That sounds terrible. Um, I'm gonna work on the vocabulary, I think. So I did a big brown dot, but I'm gonna lift a little of that color up and just add a little more of the, of the indigo. Wow. Okay. And again, like I said, try not to try not to make perfect trees with spots that go, you know, perfectly up and down like a flute. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to let these kind of set up a little bit. Um, you can't get it all in one shot usually, 
So I like to, you know, get a coat down of the darker colors and then come in a little with a little more. So, but we got to let it dry. Okay. Um, and then the same over here. I mean, basically what you want to do is just make sure if you're doing a, you know, a smaller tree, work smaller. So you don't end up with, uh, you know, giant chunks of uh, these black um, air holes, black spots. Yeah. A little bit of black, a little bit of brown. A lot of times I'll just kind of paint in the spot get it kind of dark enough and then I like to kind of bleed a couple of them a little bit just grab the edge where it's dry you know and release some of the paint to let let it kind of bleed down the tree a little bit uh, that's intriguing huh <laughs> All right. And I do. I just, you know, I like to grab little bits here and there and just pull it down. Let it bleed a little. Because it's just more texture on your, on your branches. All right. So at this point, well, I only got one more, so I might as well. I have to flip it over. I'm afraid I'll stick my hand in the other two trunks. I saw a painting demo online the other day. Yeah. And the guy was painting on a wall. And what I okay. thought was interesting is he had a stick, a long stick with like a rubber end that he was holding on the wall so he could rest his arm on the stick and it kept oh. his hand off the wall. So he never accidentally stuck his hand in his painting. Yeah, and you know what? I had a I had a student that had a little rig that a nice little rig that yeah kept his hand above his painting, and and he didn't have to worry about hitting hitting uh, hitting his painting. That's a you know what? We should kind of do one of those. All right. So birches tend to have very dark, uh, you know, gray, dark gray, blackish um, uh, little branches when they come off the tree. Not little, but that which is not a trunk. How's that? Okay. Little branches. There we go. So I, on that smaller one, I did a couple. All right. Now I want to take a little bit of water real quick. And... Like now when you're I, doing your branches, it looked like you started thick and went thin. Yeah. Uh, it's the way of trees. Well, I understand <laughs> that, but... Um, but yeah, you got. You know what I recommend? Practice. Get a piece of scrap paper <laughs> over here to the side. I can't tell you how many times I've told people over the years. You know, it's like you don't have to practice on your on your painting. You know, you can try something <laughs> a little off to the side and uh, not risk. You know, I've wrecked a lot of paintings. I hate to say that, but I have wrecked a lot of paintings being too. Um, uh, I can't even think of the word. Uh, to wanting to get it done. Um, so, come on, help me. What's that word? Impatient. Yes, thank you. I Impulsive. No, impatient. Ignorant. No, 
Nope, stop. Oh, Impatient was good. No, I like that word. It's fine. I, got, I got all kinds of words. Yeah, I know, but you can stop after any of them now. All right, now for the fun part, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, you can go in, and this is what I, let me do this real first, and then we'll do the fun part. Because I thought you told me that with a magic eraser, I could fix any screw-ups in my painting. Okay, so you might see, I'm hoping you can see this. Yeah, I think you can. Um, you want to kind of go back in and maybe, you know, drag a few more dark lines through uh, your um, uh, eye holes, black, black holes, whatever you want to call these things. I do. I like to get a little more color in them. I like to drag a few of the thin lines around them, kind of build them up a little so they get, appear bigger. And you can always go in and uh, wet these a little bit too, which I do, which I will. I like to just soften these up a little bit and just so you get them just a little more texture out of these things. So they're not all the same. So they don't look all the same. Okay. Okay. All right. And then basically the last thing I do, there's two different ways, two different things I do. The last thing I do is I do these fine little black lines. Get yourself a decent brush. Okay, with a nice point on it. I'm hoping you can, God, my hand's in the way. Let's see if I can do it. All right. Hopefully you can see this, you guys. So you want just a little bit of a curve. And what I do is I'll do two or three or four at a time. And you just kind of go up the tree and do some fine, fine lines. And you don't want them perfectly straight. It, it, it flattens out the tree. If you give them just a little bit of a curve, let's see if you can see this. <laughs> My hand's falling asleep. All right. Ah! My hand is definitely falling asleep. I'm losing control. All right. Just a few little black two, three, four at a time. Doing one at a time looks weird. I'm just kind of, you can put one, you know, every once in a while here and there, but you get the idea. See how it's kind of birching up real good? I think that's a term, right? Yep. Then the other thing I do is after I do the black ones, I will come in with just the burnt sienna. And I will add, doing the same thing, but with the brown. Just a little bit here and there. You don't have to, ooh, you don't have to go crazy. You just got to and, – and honestly, if it – with the brown, if you get little fat areas like I just did here, you can almost make it look like, you ready? Like the bark maybe peeled a little bit right in that area. And peeled down a little so that you see a little bit of a different color. You know, that under, under the white, there's like a little bit of brown tint to the, to the um, trunk itself actually to the paper of the trunk itself. So anyway, but as you can see that little bit of brown, since you already have some of that color already in here, it just helps accent the, and pop the, uh, pop these trees right out. 
You seem terribly excited, Mr. McGuire. I am. I like I like doing these things. Um, again, you can kind of go in. And what you'll end up doing is, as it dries, you'll sit and and figure things out. You'll you'll add maybe a little more texture here and there, or a little more value. But for me, I think this is enough to give you a good idea. Uh, you know, and look at that. Look at the color. Look at the. It's just fun. Okay. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to do a little bit of uh, background color, just so you can see how these trees will will pop for you. Make sure that's clean. All right. Can we do a sunset, reds and oranges and yellows? No. Mm -hmm. Why do no. you even bring me here if you're not going to take any of my suggestions? I don't want your. I don't want your reds and oranges. I hate reds and oranges. I'm just an angry man. I just like. Uh, I just wanted to do some little ultramarine blue. Kind of a cool sky rather than a warm one. Just drag it right up to the tree. So I'm going to make a suggestion. Yeah. That we save the rocks for the next video. Really? Yeah. Oh. I know okay. they'll be a little bummed at the beginning and they heard birch tree and rocks, but... We'll make it a okay. two-parter. All righty. Yeah, I mean, short. Yeah. Hopefully. Was this? <laughs> no. It wasn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I think is short is never short. I. It's ridiculous. I admit it. But, yeah, why don't we do that? So I just wanted to, like I said, get enough color in here. For you to see look at that look at how that pops out if you're doing snow scenes man there ain't nothing better than having uh having uh a few birches in your in your foreground there or a snowman either one just saying anyways that's a good now look at the tone see how the tone comes up the the back it's almost like it's the back of the tree and you're seeing the you know the light almost kind of wrap around the tree a little bit anyway so tell you what uh if that's where we're going to stop it uh we can take this up right away okay um next time. yeah yeah so again guys if you missed in the beginning this drawing is on the website you can go download it and then watch this again and follow along and probably in a day or two we'll have part two up for you to do the rocks uh, separate. So apologies if you're expecting it all in one, but like Keith's hand, I'm falling asleep. Yeah, oh nice, there we go. <laughs> all right, I will, uh, I will uh, talk to you uh, next time. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.